Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today we'll see Robert Chapter 34, the second part of the deflected current. So we'll discuss the first part today, that is, what are the obstacles from the patient's side? So there are six obstacles. Number one, pathological condition of the disease. Second, presence of mechanical obstructions in the body. Third, psychic trauma and emotional stress. Fourth, overusage of drugs by the patient. Fifth, the problem of diet. And sixth, the lack of proper physical exercise. So the first point, pathological condition of the disease. So Robert says the surgeon will only remove the offending tissue, but nature will step in and the patient recovers. So Robert says that whatever the surgeon finds pathologically abnormal, he will remove that and then nature will step, step in and the recovery will ensure. The use of X-ray or radium in modern medicine will cause destruction of the normal tissue, which may prove dangerous to the patient's health. So in a, in a disease condition, if the patients require a radium therapy or the use of X-ray repeatedly, then they will have the side effects. That is the normal tissue also will be destroyed along with the pathological tissue. And naturally, if the normal tissue is destroyed, then it will prove dangerous to the patient's health. So that is another obstacle also. Advanced pathology in an incurable condition. Now, if you have an incurable condition and the pathology is advanced, there is end organ damage and you will not be able to cure it. So it is a total incurable condition because of the advanced pathology, you will be only able to palliate. That is what palliation is what is nothing but giving temporary relief to the symptoms of the patient without much change of the susceptibility. Now, attempting to cure such cases will invariably fail. So you have to understand the obstacle that in an incurable condition, you will not be able to cure the disease because the pathology is advanced, it has become irreversible, or there is end organ damage. However, if you try, or if you're over-enthusiastic, and if you try to attempt to cure such cases, you will be a miserable failure. If cancer has progressed to the stage of metastasis, from one organ to the other organs. It is better to palliate the symptoms rather than trying to cure the disease. So if cancer has progressed and if there's metastasis in different parts of the organ, Robert says that it is better to palliate the symptoms rather than trying to cure it. Second, presence of mechanical obstruction in the body. Again, this will act as an obstacle to cure. In some cases, non-pathological foreign bodies may be present in some orifices. So in some cases, you may, you may be getting some foreign bodies which are non-pathological present in some orifices of the body. This could be producing some natural reflex symptoms. So there could be some reflex symptoms. So a foreign body can be in the ear, it can be in the nose, it can be in the eye, whatever it may be. So the foreign body will naturally produce some reflex symptoms. So the body's protective mechanism is there. If any foreign body is there, it will try to expel it out. So if a foreign body is there in the eye, you get watering of the eye, you get burning sensation, and you'll get itching of the eyes, okay? So these are the reflex symptoms which, are, which will be present according to the foreign body in which part of the body it is situated. So therefore, an indicate similimum will definitely does not cure. So if you think by giving the similimum, you will be able to cure this condition, you're sadly mistaken. Cure cannot take place until the obstruction is cleared from the site. So naturally for cure to take place, first and foremost, you have to remain, you have to remove the obstruction or to remove the obstacle that is the foreign body. After the foreign body has been re removed, what are the, whatever symptoms are there, then you take the totality and prescribe the similimum, and then you're able to cure it. But if a foreign body is present inside any orifice of the body, and, and you try to give the similimum by taking the symptoms, you will be a miserable failure. Example, arises of persistent earache 
in children who have inserted some foreign objects into their ears or nose. So the foreign objects are, in, are inserted into the ears or nose. And if you are getting coriza or if you are getting earache, then you have to remove the foreign body. In such cases, the medicines have to be administered only after mechanically remove the object from this side. As I just told you, you remove the foreign body first, then whatever symptoms are there, you take it up, and then you give the similimum, then you'll be justified. Psychic trauma and emotional stress. Over anxiety, worry, constant financial stress, tension of maintaining speed in one's work, peculiar in industrial demands, all of these have developed unusual influences upon our patients in today's world. So as you all know, in today's world, it's, a, it's an action-packed world, fast-moving world, in which there is constant anxiety, stress. The, there's a constant pressure of the boss to do their work properly, to, to finish a committed work in a small period of time. So naturally, a person undergoes too much of anxiety, too much of stress, too much of worries. This has an influence upon the patient's health. These diversions may deflect action of the curative remedy. So if, for example, you are depressed, why? The reason is that you have given a, you've given your best friend, say, a X amount of money, and he promised to return, return it to you within a six months' time, and the amount was large, and he doesn't return it to you. So you go into a depression. So no matter how much ever you will take the case properly and prescribe the medicine, the medicine will not act completely. It may act partially in which the patient is somewhat relieved, but the obstacle of the depression, of the worry, of constant thoughts that my best friend hasn't returned return me the money, so what, will, so what will happen? How will I tackle this condition? All this comes up in the patient's mind. So this acts, the psychical trauma and emotional stress acts as an obstacle to the cure. That is, they may form an obstacle to cure. So this is an example which I've just made up to, for, you, for you to understand. So the concept will become much clearer. Hanneman itself has emphasized the fact an unhappy domestic condition was causing harm to one's health. So even Dr. Hanneman has emphasized the fact that in a domestic that an unhappy domestic condition will naturally hamper one's health. He further adds that some patients do not wish to reveal their personal and private matters during the process of case taking. So naturally, if a person is stressed, if he has some personal family problems, he may not be wanting to share you in the first interview everything about himself. So that will also act as an obstacle to cure. If a physician's own personal ability to find out such hidden trauma of the patient. So it has to be the tact, the knowledge of human nature and its ability of the physician to find out what is the hidden trauma of the patient. Therefore, we say homeopathy is an art. Case taking is an art. So the physician should develop that art in order to find out the hidden trauma of the patient. Thus, the stress and strain of modern life has lowered the percentage of possible cures. So stress and strain again acts as an obstacle. And naturally, the percentage of, poss of possible cures in cases which are curable also have gone down. They have served to deflect the current of cure. So whatever cure was possible, it is not taking place or the percentage of cure has fallen because of the stress and strain of modern life. We cannot blame the homeopathy system of medicine, or we cannot find fault with the system if such deflection of cure are still present in the vital part of the patient's life. So basically, we cannot blame the homeopathic system, or we cannot find some lacunae or some fault or some defect in the system because this stress and strain of modern life of, of modern life is still present in the patient's life, which acts as an obstacle. Now, overuse of drugs by the patient. The misuse of many modern drugs like sedatives, narcotics, analgesics have called, has caused many lifestyle disorders. So as you all know, the modern medicine has a large number of drugs and each of them has its own side effects. And as a result of which they may cause some lifestyle disorders. 
the patient uses them frequently because they offer some sort of relief from the pain. So in today's world, everybody wants quick results. Everybody wants the pain to, to get better faster. So they take the, the, the support of the modern medicine in which the action of the medicine is fast and the pain is relieved. Use of such palliatives slow down the process or it retards the cure. So basically, when a patient is taking the allopathic medicine and he comes to you for homeopathic treatment, then the cure will be retarded or it will slow down the process of cure because of the obstacle of the modern drugs which the patient is taking. The use of antidepressants, cosmetics, and deodorants, etc., also fall under this category. So, Robert says that even the cosmetics, deodorants, complexion beautifiers, etc., also they fall under this category. Many cosmetic preparations contain substances which are used to suppress perspirations, eruptions, or to remove the hair growth. Most physicians definitely see many cases traceable to such measures. So. Many physicians will definitely see that the use of modern medicine along with cosmetics, deodorants, complexion beautifiers, makeup, etc. will definitely hinder the process of cure. The suppressed eruptions and their sequelae are endless. So Dr. Robert says that, that whatever you use, if there is a suppression, then there's a sequelae and in, in this there, there is an no end to it, it just goes on multiplying. We have seen cases of progressive paralysis in a young woman, which she herself traced to the use of a depilatory preparation. That means what? Depil preparation meaning what? It is it's a preparation which is used to remove unwanted hair from the body. So this is one example which Robert says. Dr. H. A. Roberts gave an example of a case of persistent cough of cochlear cocus cacti. The young lady patient did not improve despite the proper prescription. So despite taking the case properly, despite analyzing, analyzing evaluating evaluate the case and giving the indicated remedy, cocos cacti, it did not help the patient for the persistent cough. The doctor asked the young lady to stop using her lipstick and the cough ceased. So this was a very simple uh, thing to do, to stop using the lipstick and the cough ceased. Again, this was an obstacle to the cure or the current which was deflected. The problem of diet, fifth point. The overuse of so-called soft drinks, different beverages, junk foods, and other stimulants with their chemical contents may retard the action of the homeopathic remedy. So as you all know, anything in our diet which will have a medicinal property, they will interfere with the action of our homeopathic remedy and the so-called cure in cases which are curable may not be affected. So therefore they say, Robert has said, the use of soft drinks, beverages, junk food, stimulants, etc. they have chemical contents which may hamper the action of the homeopathic remedy. The modern craze for slender figures with the unbalanced diet prescribed by common people may also be an obstacle to cure. So now everybody wants to become thin, Everybody wants to stay fit and they want to become, uh, uh, I mean, if they're obese, they definitely want to reduce. But the doctors or the common people, they are prescribing unbalanced diets or unrealistic diets, which is difficult to follow. And again, it becomes an obstacle to cure to gain their slender figures. It is not because the physician cannot correct the condition with a proper balanced diet plus an indicated remedy. It is because of the psychological barrier, the unwillingness to accept a suitable diet with the corresponding normal weight. So that's a very important factor that whatever diet you give the patient, the patient may not be willing to accept that suitable diet along which corresponds to the normal weight. So the unwillingness or the uncooperation of the patient to accept a suitable diet given by the physician in order to reduce their weight will not be affected because the patient himself is unwilling to accept the diet. So no, no doubt you can give the indicated homeopathic remedy on based on whatever symptoms the patient, the patient has, 
along with the dietary uh, prescription also. But if the patient is unwilling to follow the dietary prescription, then you cannot do anything. This also forms an obstacle to cure. In other words, the patient who suffers willingly from malnutrition can be brought back to normal, only the cooperation is gained. So in other words, if a person is suffering from malnutrition, he is underweight, he can be brought back to normal only if the cooperation is gained. So if you would prescribe a diet in which the malnutrition would be corrected, and if the patient accepts the diet and he follows the diet religiously, then he can be brought back to the normal weight. Or in the case, or if the case comes to the physician before dangerous physiological changes set in. On the other hand, there is malnutrition resulting from an unbalanced diet directly traceable to a depressed budget. Or it may be so that the patient or the person is malnourished because the person has a limited budget of certain rupees to spend in a month, which is not sufficient to nourish the person, the, to nourish the patient properly. This has to be met not only with homeopathic remedy, but with the economic e equilibrium and a well thought of diet if the patient has to be cured. So if the patient has to be cured, not only the homeopathic remedy has to be given, but also the patient's economic condition should be stable and then only he'll be able to follow such a diet and he'll be able to regain his weight if he's, mal, if he's undernourished or malnourished or if he's obese, he'll be able to decrease his weight. Here we meet an economic obstacle that is often beyond the help of the physician. So this economic obstacle is naturally far away from the scope of the physician. The physician cannot do anything. So that, that, that also becomes another major obstacle Robert has to say. Now the sixth point, the lack of proper physical exercise. The question of proper exercise would seem to lie within the province of the physician. There are patients who cannot take steady exercises because of some pathological obstacles. So because of their advanced pathology, they may not be able to do certain exercises which the physician has told them because of their ill health condition. So the ill health or the advanced pathology doesn't allow them to do such strenuous exercises, again, which can act as an obstacle. But as such patients are usually chronic with a long history and a poor prognosis. So Robert says that such patients, they usually have a chronic disease, they have a very long history, and they have an advanced pathology, and the prognosis is very poor. We usually accept the situation and we do best we can towards homeopathic palliation. So in such instances, what do we do? We have to palliate the case as best as we can. At times, surprisingly, as it may be to us, we sometimes approach cure in spite of the difficulty. So if you are lucky or if the patient is lucky, then with the help of God's grace, sometimes you may be able to approach cure in spite of difficult cases. So the pathology may be advanced, but not an in pathological state, or it could be a borderline case between curability and incurability, and you have given the medicine, and by luck, or by chance, or by the grace of God, the patient has improved, and the cure has taken place. So this is sometimes, this may also happen. The advice to the patients do not the advice to the patients to do mild to moderate exercise improve their condition remarkably. So whatever the patient is suffering from, if these exercises are useful, the physician will definitely tell the patient. So mild to moderate exercises are very useful. As the vitality of the patient improves by exercises, homeopathic medicines give wonderful results in such cases. So naturally, if you exercise, the vitality will improve, your vigor will improve, you will feel a bit energetic and naturally whatever homeopathic medicines the homeopathic physician is giving the patient also will have a wonderful result. So that's all for this video. Please be stay tuned for more. The part three will be coming up in which we will discuss the second part.